Hello, welcome to my art life vlog that I'm going to start here. So my name is Maureen O'Keefe. I'm sure you probably already know that if you're watching me. And I am a painter. I live in Sydney, Ohio, but my studio here is in Piqua, Ohio. And I wanted to start with just a little bit about myself. I'm a painter with a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Savannah College of Art and Design, studied painting, graduated in 2005, and the reason I am here in little old Sydney slash Piqua, Ohio, is that when I got married down in Savannah, um, I had my first daughter and was like, oh my God, I need help. <laughs> um, so I, we packed up and my husband and I moved back here because my family is from Sydney. I then got a job teaching at Edison State Community College. I teach drawing and painting. And I have my own personal practice of painting. So we can cover all of that in all of these vlogs. Um, but the first, for the first one, I just kind of wanted to talk about what I'm doing right now. It's been a super duper busy fall. I started, um, well, it's been a super busy year, actually. So it started in January. My friend Shauna Hatton and I, who's another painter, um, she's from Springboro, Ohio. She and I got accepted into this residency in France called the Chateau Orcavo, and we went for two weeks to the Chateau, and we painted, and we drank a lot of wine, and uh, did a lot of painting, and met with, I think there were 18 other artists on our residency with us, living in the chateau and working in the chateau and running around and getting into general madness, but it was a blast. Uh, then we spent another week in Paris and came home. So that was the very beginning of my year this year. From there, um, I had spoken with the director of the residency, um, Beulah Van Rensburg. She advised me to try to take part like try to get my artwork out of the the regional area um try to get some eyeballs on it in other places so i signed up or i applied for the other art fair which is through sachi art and got into that and i so i was accepted to the dallas fair and in may my husband and i packed all of my big paintings up and we went to dallas which was a lot of fun, and I plan on making a whole video about the Dallas Fair. Then all summer, I kind of worked on all this other stuff, and this fall now I have four shows going on um, kind of in this two-month period, September and October. So September started with a show of my nudes at the Betty Gallery in Dayton at Front Street, and I just took that show down on Sunday. Then the second thing, um, which is still ongoing, is at the Historic Sydney Theater. I've got a show there of solo work in their East Storefront that was part of their Arts and Arches Festival. That was fun too. Um, the Ross Brothers came up from New Orleans and showed their documentary 45365, which is about Sydney, and it's you know all of our hometown. So that was awesome. Then on or um, coming up, I have Beauties and Beasts, which is figurative work from both Shauna and I that we completed at Chateau Orcavo or started there, kind of both. It's work stemming from the France trip. Then uh, I have another show opening October 22nd at the Fitton Center in Hamilton called Being Good. I'm looking really forward to that one. Uh, and then Coming up in January, I just booked another show, which will be at Wild Goose Creative in Columbus. So I'm kind of in the mad dash to get everything hung and work finished. And there's a painting behind me that I'm working on to finish for the Fit and Center show, which I have to deliver here in the next like week and a half. So working on finishing that. All right, so back to the vlog or vlog, whatever. Terrible at this stuff. Uh, now that you know what I've been up to and what I'm doing, um, 
now it's time to paint with me. So I have a few finishing touches or things that need to happen with this painting behind me before the Fit and Center show gets delivered. Um, one of which is obviously framing it, but it needs to be worked out first. I paint with my glasses off because I get up really close to the painting and I'm too old. Um, I need bifocals probably and I am lazy and don't want to go through all of the things it would take to get the bifocals. <laughs> so you get to see me paint with my glasses off. Uh, while I'm working on this painting, I plan on talking to you about my process and why it is what I do with my paintings. So I'm just going to start with my supplies. I use acrylic paint, mostly golden open acrylics nowadays because they uh, take a really long time to dry. They're super amazing. Uh, they are the closest thing to oil that I found that, um, I don't know, they're just so flexible. You can do everything with them. Treat them like watercolors, treat them like acrylics, or treat them like oils. So golden open acrylic. And I have a fairly limited palette. My two reds that I use are cadmium red medium and alizarin crimson. My two yellows that I, or well, I have three yellows, but not in this painting but three yellows that I typically use are yellow ochre, cadmium yellow medium, and Naples yellow hue. And the yellow ochre is out for this painting. So we've got two reds, two yellows. We've got always raw umber, almost always cerulean blue. And I use Utrecht Studio Series Acrylic for the cerulean because I found that everybody makes cerulean different. And this is the particular pigment that I like. I wish I could get it in an open acrylic, but I can't. I have tried it in the golden open, but it's lighter and more opaque, and I don't like that. Mm. It all just repeats. Then I have my titanium white that I use, and that is also very specific. It is professional Winsor Newton acrylic titanium white, not open reason I use this is that it's super opaque um, and it's super nice and thick and uh, there's almost a little bit of grit to it and I tend to go very thick with the white and I like how that reacts with all of the other pigments. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So almost every painting that I have contains two, four, six, seven, one of eight pigments. Um, in France, I did pick up this permanent violet dark, which I've used a couple times, but I can also kind of get that with alizarin and cerulean. So this is just really for the transparentness of it. Um, but I've only used it on two paintings so far. Sometimes I use a matte medium. Sometimes I use this matte acrylic extender and this is for the line work it it really strings out the paint so that I can um, make those nice long lines that I like and that's it so those are my supplies but right now what I'm getting ready to do is darken uh, the nose back here and add some red like deeper red to some of the red splotches on this painting and I'll pause it. I am all mixed up. My paint is all mixed up and I'm ready to put some glaze on this nose to try to tone it down a little bit. I don't want it so bright. So I have really thinned out glaze to try to darken this a little bit. Hopefully it works the way that I'm intending it to. The only thing I don't like about glaze is that it always ends up streakier than I want it to be. I've not figured out how to get it quite as neatly blended as I want it. But that's pretty good. glaze in the darker areas a little bit 
and the light blew this up. So I think that this glaze will lighten this dark section and darken this light section and bring them closer together. That's my hope. Because I'm really happy with the vast majority of this painting. It's just this this face that I'm not super thrilled about right now. And then once these things are fixed, darkening this nose, I wanna brighten the lips a little bit. Uh, then I'll go back over some lines that might need to be crispier. And then I think it'll be done. So that's that. I hope, I hope it comes out good. So this painting is going to be titled Blessings and Woes, and it's actually a conglomeration of different faces of people that I took photographs of. Um, so the kissing men are not a particular person. This is the first time I've actually combined faces like this. I usually like to keep it very like honestly a, a direct portrait uh, but this one doesn't really need to be i've been thinking about the beatitudes and um i think the the normal beatitudes that people think of come from like a specific book of the bible i think matthew but uh these beatitudes i believe are from luke they actually they're blessings and woes not just Blessed are those who blah, blah, blah. So blessings and woes are the, the grouping of things that are both both blessings and woes. Duh, that sounds stupid and redundant, but oh, that doesn't work. So I just wipe stuff off with my fingers a lot, and then I end up going home with grossness all over. But that's all right. We're going to use thicker than glaze, so this, I just grabbed some thicker paint to start lightening this up a little bit. At this point, I'm making just really subtle changes to things, I don't want to go overboard. And I tend to get quiet when I'm painting also because because I'm focusing sorry but we're making just tiny adjustments here this part's probably pretty boring so maybe I'll turn you guys off for now all right friends I'm gonna tackle this eye over here so there's this little section up here that I wanted to leave the splatter reveal because um, I like that, but it's too bright. So it looks out of place in this face. Should be in shadow more. So I'm going to really like make this red more vibrant. I've got just a cad red medium straight up out of the tube, sort of mixed with water, no medium, just really thinned out with water. And I'm going to sort of glaze it on there as best I can to deepen that, that eyebrow. And we'll stop here. No, we'll stop over here. I think it'll take a few more glazes of red to get to where I want it to be depth-wise. Maybe we'll come out to here. Yeah. All right, so that was one layer. Now we're a little bit darker, um, and we're just going to keep going. Now we get to see some line work. Got the painting on sideways so that I can reach this inner area on the side a little easier. We're just going to go over top of what I've already got 
I don't ever add lines. I just highlight lines. It's one of my little rules of painting. Um, I was telling people at my opening in Sydney the other night that my little rules are kind of like my philosophy for life. When I do my initial blank contour drawing, I'm stuck with that. Once I start a painting, I either finish the painting with the lines I have or I, or I trash it, uh, paint over it or whatever if it's too terrible and hard to work with. But um, I kind of feel like that's life for you. You know, you, um, you get what you get and you work with it. You find the beauty in the imperfection. You make do, I don't know, you make do with what you have. That's so trite, that's so stupid, but if it's good enough for life, it's good enough for my paintings, I guess. <laughs> um, I love the blind contour process because it isn't perfect. I think perfection is an illusion that we sell ourselves we tell ourselves everybody else is so much better than us. I don't know, at least I do. Maybe other people don't have that problem, but I suffer from like either, you know, certain days I have too much self-esteem and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm amazing. And then other days I'm like, crap, you're the worst person in the world. You've done everything wrong in your life. You've made every bad decision that there is, um, et cetera, et cetera. But obviously I haven't, so those are just the bad days. Funny enough, when I'm painting, I don't think any of that. I don't think at all. I'm just making decisions about the work. And the nice thing about pain is you can just get rid of it if you really hate it. If you live with it for a while and decide it's truly awful. Um, just paint over it. So my easel moves. It's on nice big rollers. So I kind of can adjust as needed with my legs. Just kind of kick it around. I kind of jump around. I don't reline every line. Just, just the ones I think are important. Might make a big difference in the painting. Like right now I'm choosing to kind of highlight just maybe one side of this dreadlock. The inner inside of it, I think, is what I want. And it doesn't make a huge difference. But it does in my mind, I guess. It's like trimming out, you know, a room. It's not finished until you add the baseboards or the door is not done until you put the trim on. on this, these lines are just the final or the trim. Sometimes I do thicken them if I want more dark. You get the idea there. Okay, so this will be the end of my vlog about my my painting for today and the first of my painting life vlogs if I so choose to continue. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera around here in just a second and show you the painting that I was working on while I talked today and invite you to come back because I'll probably do um, maybe another vlog about my experience in Dallas. Maybe I will be posting about sort of the relationship between politics and religion and my work. Uh, maybe I will talk about other people's work. I don't know what this is gonna become, but um, I'm thinking maybe it's a good outlet for me uh, to get some of my thoughts out there. So I'm going to flip it around uh, and just show you the painting and then we will be all finished. All right.
So I worked on darkening the nose. I worked on that eye up close. I did some line work today in there around the beards, around the lips a little bit, around the hair, up here. Oh, I did line work everywhere. I particularly like that eye. I'm still, um, I don't know, I think I need some more layers on this, just this area. It just feels not right to me so far. So come back another day. You'll see some more content from me maybe, hopefully, if I, this goes well and it's easy to put together. That's the whole painting. Blessings and woes.